Nigerians and friends of Nigeria on issues surrounding Nigeria from around the world. My name is Kayo De Kundamese. Hello, good evening viewers. My name is Kayo De Kundamese. You're welcome to Ben Television and tonight's show is Politics with KO. Uh, it's still that special edition about the mixing Nigerian girls. Uh, the hashtag bring back our girls and generally the state of the Nigerian nation. How did we get to this point? What can we do to help Nigeria? I mean Nigerians in diaspora, Nigerians at home. And it's a special program really because we were able to get two Nigerians that work for Nigeria in different ways. Uh, we've got um, Tonya Prince Will and Fumi Yoda. Tonya will be joining us in the program uh, shortly. But first, Fumi Yoda is Nigeria's award uh, winning blogger, producer. She's been on TV. She's a, a pioneer. She, she pioneered this breakfast show in Nigeria that um, caught everyone's attention. And she's been off. Yeah, for a very long time, but we managed to drag her out of uh, uh, exile, self-exile, self-imposed exile, as we'll say. And she, she agreed based on the fact that this is, these are special moments for this country, and she needs to have her voice. So uh, in the studio, we've got Fumi. Fumi, you're welcome to Politics with Keo. Hi, Kari. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I almost had to blackmail you to get you out of the your hideout really so why have you been off television i haven't found a project that i was interested in doing okay and we do not have a television industry okay and i intend i like the idea of belonging to an industry where i can make a living without depending on the people's common wealth okay. if you know what i mean yeah so it wasn't um, the back end didn't add up and um, I'm trying to find a way to make it add up. When it adds up, perhaps you'll find me. But that doesn't mean that if I'm not there, yeah. I'm not empowering other people to be there or I don't put other content yeah. on television. Besides, I did that show. Before then, I'd done another television show. So altogether, I had done sort of like from age 24 to 2008, I was on yeah. television almost on a daily basis. I was tired. Okay. I'd done everything, I said everything, I was tired. And you know, a lot of the things we were talking about seemed like a repetition. We were yeah. going over the same things over and over again. My soul was weary. So you just thought I need a break off this. I needed a break. I also wanted to find the right thing mm. to do. Okay. I think I might have found it. Okay. I think I'll be back soon. Mm, okay. But I like to do things before I talk about them. I don't like to talk and then I don't, I'm not a branding generation, okay. I'm afraid, sorry. Okay, I know as a, for a, as a matter of fact that you're supposed to be in Abuja right now attending the uh, West Africa, the, the World Economic Forum. And that is an important event. Why are you in the UK? You're not in Nigeria attending that event. I mean, I am a YGL, that's the young global leader. Uh, leader. We had, had like a forum of world global leaders around the world of the World Economic Forum. And I do take seriously the charge. I mean, in the first instance, I wouldn't have been chosen as one if I didn't have a moral compass that, you know, was true to me. And my moral compass, first and foremost, is pointed in the direction of, you know, our human state and the generality of our people. Mm. I feel along, I've always felt, I wrote years ago that I am passionate about Nigeria. I love Nigeria. Mm. Perhaps I don't have a choice but to love Nigeria because I am Nigerian. Mm. But beyond the surface, I do love the people that we are. And I'm consumed mm. by the state that Nigeria is in. I did not go to WEF. I support WEF. Mm. Let's get it, let's not mix them up. That's the World you Economic know, the World Forum. Economic Forum yeah. You know, but I did not support the Nigerian government. Mm. I did not like the way the Nigerian government treated the abducted girls. Mm. Please stop calling them missing. They are mm. not missing. They did not disappear. Mm. Somebody grabbed them. Mm. You know, so the, the, like, it was almost contemptuous the way mm. the government was treating the people initially. Yeah. I mean, I saw the parents weeping. It took the parents, if you notice, if you go back now, yeah. it took the parents coming out and all those pictures of anguish mm. for people to start getting angry, mm. for people to start reacting. But before then, I'd already gone crazy. They had murdered 
over 50 boys yeah. in their school just a month before that time. Yeah. Murdered boys in mm. school. And now they got the girls. So I was too, I just, for me, mm. and I don't speak for my colleagues. Most of my colleagues, you know, are upright, yeah. you know, people doing their best in their communities. But for me, for me, that I could not be there. Yeah. But some would say, some would argue that maybe you, you should be at the World Economic Forum, which is something to promote Nigeria and Africa, and you could still make your point right there at the forum. No, it's not actually to promote Nigeria and Africa. It's a meeting in Africa. They have it around different countries yeah. in Africa. It's just that it's been held in Nigeria yeah. this year. I have been to other editions of mm. the World Economic Forum meetings in Africa, so yeah. it's not strictly that. And then... I, I come from a school of honor mm. that says that, you know, I'm a YGL, I'm not an outsider. Mm. To go, you know, and stand on the platform of the YGL mm. and start throwing tantrum, I think it's badly behaved. Mm. There's no reason to do that. Okay. I see nothing that I would gain by doing that other than maybe attracting media attention to myself. Okay. I am not inter interested in media attention to myself. Mm. I am interested in my country mm. and how it will get better. Okay. You know, and a lot of energies was already going to us. I knew there were other ways for me mm. to do this other than to, I would have thought that that was ego egotistical. Mm. You know, it would have been about me. And then it would have been dishonorable to the platform of WEF. Right, yeah. You understand? So I couldn't do that. Okay. For me, that was not the way to do it. Okay, we're going to bring in uh, Tony uh, very soon. Um, let me ask you this. What? Okay, you're not in WEF, you're in London. What are you going to do? you know, for these girls? What are the alternatives? I mean, we're doing a lot of things already. Incidentally, it was interesting, you know, at the beginning of this, I saw someone tweet, bring back the girls. Yeah. And I remember, and I was there in my timeline, I remember saying, it is not the girls, mm. it is our, our girls. girls. Yeah. So in a way, I take ownership of this. Mm. Now, aside from that, my organ I started, you know, um, my Change Your Life Foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have an office in New Zealand, we have in Lagos, mm. You know, and I'm here half time in London. Mm. So in New Zealand already, Jumoke, the, Jumoke Giwa, the um, executive director of yeah. um, Change Your Life, have, has got everybody. Mm. Everybody. We've been at it for a while. Everybody, they, they, they're delivering letters to all the, um, all the stakeholders that matter in government, got yeah. school children, got community, community leaders. All of them are out. And in London tomorrow, there will be a rally. Yeah. You know, I didn't join any rally before now because, yeah. you know, I was still hoping, I was wait, waiting yeah. to go to WEF. I was still hoping that there will be some proactive re reactions from Nigerian government. And, you know, because now a lot of things have happened, we are forgetting the order mm. of things. Yeah. But just before then was when there was that presidential chat. Yeah. And I found it outrageous. Mm. You know, soon after that, they arrested Benga Sheson. Yeah. Briefly. Briefly yeah. And you know, I thought, come on, you know, I'm not, you know, going to do that. So I didn't go, so I, I didn't join any of those rallies. Rally, the next yeah. one will be the one in London tomorrow. Which is tomorrow. And I will be there. Okay, so I we're going to see you uh, right in front of the High Commission tomorrow for 10 a.m. Yeah, and mm. let me tell you that it doesn't make me happy to have to do things like mm. that. You know, I don't have, pers I have no personal animosity towards the government mm. or the people in government. Yeah. You know? I don't know why things are the way they are. I don't know why, where there's some sort of, you know, I don't know, I don't know why they react yeah. the way they do. And I, I suppose that part of it is the, the fear of the opposition doing this, mm. doing that, and so you don't, I mean. Okay. Look, well, for me, luckily we've, we've got Tony. Uh, before we bring in Tony, there, my producer has got a clip from, um, from uh, I think Obama, William Egg. There's been a lot of international outcry you know, about these girls. And the, the campaign from Nigeria has actually taken shape that it's, it's like wildfire. And we, luckily, we've got Fumi Yoda in the studio. And just take a look at this um, call for action from President Obama and UK Foreign Secretary William Aig. Then when we get back, Prince Tony, Prince Will has um, honors, he's, he's given us, he's been here before, but he, he had to come back again because he's a Nigerian politician. He knows the system quite well. He's, he's been very active in his state, River State, which is an oil producing area. So let's, let's have the clip. to such a vile organization. And it is uh, an example of why we have set up the Preventing Sexual Violence Initiative. Um, this is, so, as, as you know, we are holding, I will be hosting the summit in London next month. This is to help countries, including Nigeria, 
uh, improve the way they tackle the consequences of sexual violence, uh, make sure that those responsible can be brought to justice, that the evidence is gathered, uh, that those who are victims of it can be properly looked after in the future. And recently we persuaded Nigeria to support that campaign. So this in the future may help. Of course, it doesn't help today with the situation of these girls and our hearts go out to their families. I called the Nigerian foreign minister when this first arose uh, back on uh, Good Friday in the middle of last month uh, to offer help from Britain to express our concern. Um, well, I don't think it's possible to go into the details of what help we could, precisely what help we could provide. Uh, but we have offered assistance. Our High Commissioner uh, in Nigeria continues to offer assistance. We continue to discuss that with the Nigerians. So Britain is offering assistance. Uh, but of course, the primary responsibility for dealing with this rests with the Nigerians. Uh, and we hope they will do what is necessary to reunite these girls with their families. We're sending in a team made up of our military and law enforcement and other experts. Uh, and we're very glad that Nigeria's uh, accepted the help. Uh, obviously what's happening is awful, and as, as a father of two girls, I can't imagine what the parents are going through. Uh, but this organization, Boko Haram, has been one of the worst regional or local terrorist organizations in the world. Uh, we've long sought to work with Nigeria on uh, dealing with them, and we're going to do everything we can uh, to assist them uh, in recovering uh, these young women. Uh, more broadly, though, we're going to have to really tackle uh, a pernicious problem inside that country, uh, 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 an organization that has carried out ruthless attacks and killed uh, thousands of people uh, over the last several years. That was um, President Barack Obama of the USA and British Pri uh, Foreign, Foreign Secretary uh, William Aig, uh, talking about bring back our girls in Nigeria. And what's happened here, that the actions what, of... was quite um, amazing from information we gathered was apparently the foreign government, the U.S. government and the British government confirmed that they actually got in touch with the Nigerian government a day after the incident happened, offering every assistance in the world that they could. But they didn't hear back from the Nigerian government until the outcry, the campaign by ordinary Nigerians spread like wildfire. And President Jonathan finally, and we want to concede to the fact that at least he made a U-turn, said, you know what, we want you to come in and help us. And we hope this is going to bring in the required result. And we've got someone in the studio. We've got Prince Tony Prince Will. Uh, this is not about politics. So although he's a member of the Nigerian ruling party, he's here as a Nigerian and he's a Nigerian politician. We just want, his, his, want to have his insight on what is happening back home. Tonya, you're welcome to Politics with Keo. Thank you, Keo. Yeah, you've been here before, and now it's a different occasion. Th things are really, really bad. You, you heard President Obama right there saying, look, we're going to do all we can to find these girls. Why didn't we get this kind of assuring words from our government back home when this incident happened? Well, I think um, you know, it's a very good question. Um, there's no doubt that the government uh, could have done a lot better and could have responded a lot uh, faster than they did. Um, there's no doubt about that. But um, some of us um, um, have the view that really what we should be looking for now is rather than playing the blame game, um, while we're pointing our fingers at each other, we have young girls who are currently in harm's way and we need to get them out of harm's way. So what we should be really looking forward to now is how do we get them out of this position? I mean, many countries go through uh, sad situations, and when these sad situations happen, what the people of the country do mm. is they come together, they unite, they find a way out of this. As far as I'm concerned, there are two sides to this, is good and evil. Mm. And I think the majority of Nigerians are good people. They abhor what has happened. Uh, they're very, very uh, uh, dissatisfied. And I see this as there's a silver lining in a very dark cloud where Nigerians are speaking up. The social media, the uh, Nigerian people have stood up and said enough is enough. And as a result of that, the government are listening. Uh, should they have listened earlier? Of course. Mm. Could they have done it differently? Yes. But what I really want Nigerians to focus on, and of course the international community, yeah. is rather than demonizing the government, yeah. what we should be focusing on is demonizing the true demons. Now, now, Tony, if, to if I might come in here, listening to you now, and 
I say this with uh, every sense of responsibility. These are not the kind of words we hear from doing your Toye is not the average. Please. <laughs> I didn't the... waste time leaving my house. Toye, mm -hmm. our house is on fire. We are mm. not going to be pretending here. Toye, you know that things are not the way they are meant to be. What has happened to over six billion, isn't it, mm. that has been voted for security? Why do we have the sort of military that we have? What is going on? Of course, Boko Haram is the evil that we all yeah. must get behind. We will get behind our president if our president well, listen, showed us, if we were transparent about some of this. What, what, why is the military in the state? I would love to be able to answer the question, but yeah. I don't think the question is for me to answer. Yes. And I think what happens beyond... within the party? How does the party... How does the party yeah. How does the, how does the party feel about what's going on? Well, what I, is the party's position? I would love I would love to be speaking on behalf of the party, but I can't. Mm. I can speak on behalf of good common sense Nigerian people, and I don't see why anything like this should be a party political issue. It's not. But for me, yeah, but the, for the me, government. Me, let me, let me ask, let, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not speaking on behalf of the government. Let me explain. Let me explain. Tony something. has a point. Tony let me explain has a, something. Tony, Tony has a point here. It's, though. it's unfortunate. The, the issue. The, the issue of us rallying behind the president you know even if we acknowledge that the president is not doing enough he obviously needs help he's saying that there must be a a, a bipartisan a bipartisan approach. i'm not even you know? saying a bipartisan approach a bipartisan approach is the least that we can expect what i'm saying is that for anybody at a time like this to start talking about pointing the fingers at the pdp or mm -hmm. nigerian government look the time for an introspection a post-mortem will come it's not a postmodern. These will. matters are and, ongoing. And Where I want is the to, I want $20 explain, billion? Dollar? Where is the 20 billion? Mm. I, excuse, excuse me, me what 20 no. billion are you talking about? Exactly. Are you talking about no, Sanusi's 20 billion? So that's why I want to thank you. No, oh, so because Sanusi said that 20 billion is missing, that means 20 billion is missing. Now, I want to be proven wrong. I want him to be proven wrong. I would love to. I would love to. I would love to have this conversation with Kema Chikwe or Sanusi, but they're not here. came on television. Since they're not here, it's a pointless conversation. But they're not here. They're not here. But Ngozi confirmed, Ngozi Okonjo will in where I confirm that, yeah, 10 billion is missing, even if it is 1 billion. No, you see, unfortunately for us, unfortunately for us, we are suddenly alive to the responsibilities of government yeah. and that government is corrupt. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, I was talking to somebody this morning that was yeah. saying we're in a dire situation. Nigeria has been in a dire situation for a long time. Absolutely. It takes this incident for Absolutely. people to suddenly become awake to it. Mm. Look, for people like me, I have no interest in politics. Why am I in politics? I'm in politics because at the end of the day, yeah. there is no reason. Because I would rather be doing something else. Mm. But many people who should be doing politics are not doing politics. Okay, let's just bring it back to the girls. So let's go oh, back to the girls. Okay, let me, let me bring it back to the, to the girls. Now, you are talking about everybody come united. Uh, we need to act as one. These are not the messages we hear from Doni Okupe, from uh, Labaran Maku, from, um, from uh, what's the other one's name, uh, Ruben Abati. This uh, Rena Mokiri, they're listen, talking this. Uh, listen, I think. Why, why, uh, why is it I that think, the government. I think, not... I think, unfortunately for us, the yeah. people that should be probably playing the politics yeah. are not playing the politics. And the people that should be uh, playing the politics are doing something else. So you admit now, that. I'll give you a typical example. Yeah. This government responded very slowly to what was clearly a major problem. Mm. They missed the ball. They missed the curve. Okay. Now, I want to put it down to inexperience. Mm. Some people say they're insensitive. Some people say they don't care. Yeah. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that. But we're but very I will... experienced in tragedy. No, but... Too many people. 50, over 50 let boys were Let me just, if you allow me, finish. Yeah. What I'm thinking How's of... That's why the 300 I'm people hoping. have just been killed. I'm just as, hoping. As, 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 I'm, just hoping. That. I'm hoping that they missed the ball. And I will now see an opportunity for them to prove yeah. that they're serious. Because Nigerians are watching. Mm. But you see, if we're looking at it purely from the political angle, yeah. I want to ask us a question. Are, suddenly, are we suddenly saying that government has suddenly become corrupt? No. Government has been corrupt for ages. And people have been quiet. Does, they that, have been watching. does that justify it? No, I'm not saying it justifies it. What I'm saying is that we have to recognize mm. that if you see, I've, I'm, I've, I've been a complainer. I'm tired of complaining. I complained about Obasanjo. I got Yara Dua. I complained yeah. about Yara Dua. I got good luck. I complain about good luck. What happens? Okay. You give me somebody else? Okay. I'll, I'm, no, I don't want us to keep complaining. I want us to propose solutions. Okay. And before we propose solutions, I'm going to have my producer play a clip now uh, so that we will we'll see this clip. And I want our viewers to watch this clip. And then I'll have the reaction of Fumi and Tony to the, to the clip.
from some quarters, especially people close to the people in government, saying that no, girls were not missing. They are just mere propaganda to That's the That's the point government. I'm trying to make. I mean, I, I'm sorry to be so hard on Toye because I know Toye is not directly in government. Now, when I use government, I use it as a loose term. Yeah. The person responsible for the security of Nigeria right now is President Good Luck, yeah. whom, by, to all intents and purposes, seems yeah. like a really decent gentleman. But he has failed tremendously, yeah. not only in handling this case with the boy, with the, with the girls, yeah. but almost every case. Yeah. I repeat, 300 people were massacred mm. this week. Yeah, just after the well, week after the Chibok incident. Case, I still haven't seen any sort of urgency. Mm. Why I'm talking like this is because we have for too long, and you are right in saying, "Oh, we complained about this." We but the way they try and shut us up when we complain, actually, is they tell us, "Oh." profile solution get behind the government what am i getting behind if somebody wants to lead me they explain to me what the actions are and mm. tell me what i need to do and then i will get behind it not if a person is even in denial of my problems yeah. that's on one hand and then on the other hand complaining we're not complaining nigerians need to stop complaining they need to start demanding that was the yeah. difference that yeah. is the difference actually yeah. it needs to start demanding yeah. better leadership from yeah. lead, from all of their leaders and i'm not talking about the ruling party including yeah. the opposition, the opposition yeah. where is the opposition in this yeah. where is the opposition in this i'll no. tell you where the opposition no. is the opposition is quite happy because right now what is going on is that we have the social how, media how we you, have commentators yeah. coming up and taking the position that the opposition should have taken so they're doing a better job of it. What I say is that the people who should be playing the politics yeah. are not playing the politics. Yeah, you and made, the you people made, who shouldn't be are yeah. the ones that are you doing made, it. You made a statement, I just want to clarify, that you said the opposition are happy. Are you saying they're happy about the situation in the well, country? Well, there's now? no doubt that the president and the ruling party looking bad mm. is not something that the opposition will lose sleep over. There's something I said mm. earlier, and I think it's something that we should reflect upon. Yeah. Now, I hear Fumi pointing the finger at the president. Yeah. which is fantastic. I mean, of course, he, yeah. takes res he has to take responsibility. There's yeah. no escaping it. But if we look at uh, this man and this team that he's mm. working with, you'll see that there are so many people who could potentially have been part of this solution yeah. that never played a role. From the DPO working your way all the way up mm. to the governor of the state who was told, please, this should not happen here. Mm. Nobody's talking about them, which is okay. Mm. Everybody's talking about the president. Remove the president. I'm going to put somebody else okay. and hope for change. Okay. Now, the problem I, this is the problem I have. Yeah. We have young people out there. They're in this situation. Do you realize that if we find these women tomorrow, by God's grace, we will? Mm. The thing can happen again. Mm. In the Niger Delta, under the reign of uh, Obasanjo, a whole town was leveled. Mm. Yaradua, same thing. The problem has been there. Fortunately, it has come to the okay. fore. My problem is, can we finally, for once, okay. end this thing? Okay, before I, before I take the next phone Instead call, of the complaint. I, I want to take a phone call, but just take, put have this in mind. President Jonathan praised General Buhari for coming out to say everybody should support it, uh, the president for this fight against terrorism. Are you aware of that? Okay, and he's a member of the opposition. And then I'd like yeah. to say something very quickly. Let's, Absolutely. Let's, let's, let's be but it's not let, it's, let's, it's let's, a rarity. It's let not even say, common. Let me say this. It's abnormal. Exactly. It's let news. Me, oh, but it's, it's a good thing it came out. Let me but say that's this. what it should be. But In this let country, me, let me where you have this. the IRA... Let okay. me say this. It doesn't happen. Okay. Let me say that there's a tendency to demonize protest, complaints, oh, that's wrong. and dissent. And I don't agree it with it. It is not... I want to bring in our viewers. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Where are you calling from, please? Yeah, I'm calling from India. Okay, and what's your name? Yeah, my name is Ali. All right, go ahead, Ali. Yeah, well, you asked, you people talk about opposition. We know that TDP don't want opposition to try and there. So there's no question about where the opposition The opposition is there, but they, don't allow, they are not allowing the opposition to try. That's, that's a fact. We have the right to complain as Nigeria. Mm. These things are not going right. These things are not going right. We have the right to in America, in Britain, that we have things are not wrong, we complain. So, if corruption, insecurity is the order of the day in Nigeria, I must say Nigeria should be complain. We should complain. Let me tell you what happened in that, 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 in Hmm. And when they talk about the military going the wrong way, according to the military intentionally, you know, the immediate, they intentionally, you know, you know, exclude, you know, those kids, or how, how that was, they intentionally skip those insurgents. Because according to what I said, 
There is only a thin soldier yeah. in Shibok that went when they had the call that the soldiers are coming. But when the soldiers got to know that those the soldiers are going to them, they were going yeah. to them. The intentionally skip. Okay. We are that you said to also show. So Jonathan so, has said we need to change this woman and not Okay, th th thanks, for your, thanks for your call. And I want to, make, I want to bring this to Tonya's attention. There is a state of emergency in Borno. And you've got people coming in trucks, military trucks. And we have Nigerian satellites, NICOM, NICOM 1, NICOM 2, NICOM 3, that are supposed to be on surveillance. And you still say we shouldn't ask questions from the man. We should ask questions. Yeah. People feel that at this point, what we should be doing basically yeah. is um, Blame. blaming President Jonathan. Um, look, I believe we should, he should take responsibility definitely, but I think yeah. that we owe a responsibility to the next generation and to the girls that are currently in harm's mm. way to focus our energies yeah. more on solutions rather mm -hmm. than analyzing the problem. Now, we don't know that they came in trucks. We don't know that they came as 200. I don't know. You hear different reports. Yeah. What is very important to recognize is that yeah. the same Nigerian army has been going around the world in Sierra Leone, in different African countries. Yeah. In fact, I've heard the UN, the UN say it many times that any time they have a problem in Africa, they call, Nigeria. they call on the same Nigerian army. Now, this army, there's, people forget, they've not even heard the reports that some of the soldiers, mm. are, their children are inside these people that are missing. So we have a very awkward situation. Mm. Now, I would love to lash out because it is what took me into politics in the first place is just anger. Okay, so would, anger. You, would you say, are you saying but that? Unfortunately, sorry, lashing uh, out, lashing you saying, out, okay, are you saying does not solve the problem. Are you saying excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. No, they should, they, excuse they should. Me, excuse me, yeah. let us, let us But it does not solve the problem. No. Yeah. This, this government, and it's not just this government, if you allow me finish. successive Nigerian government. If you allow me finish, what I just wanted to learn by concluding is just to simply say that when we finish pointing the finger and all what not, I tell you and I dare you, tell me the way forward. Which is what and I that tell is what you. I want listen, to listen, 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 let me tell you the way forward. Me, I, told you, I told you I did not come here for phone calls. So. For, for me, for me, I told you, um, because we have to let um, I know, I understand. No, exactly. But, but and that's democracy. But I just want to listen to people. No, he asks for no, solutions. Let's people tell us. Let's, let's hear from people. I am a television producer. Yeah. I know how you can schedule these things so yeah. that it doesn't interrupt yeah. the conversation. Mm. And I am tired of people in government always saying that night, we are ordinary Nigerians yeah. complaining. It's not the people, it is not the opposition that's complaining now. Yeah. If the people are complaining because they are powerless, when you say that they shouldn't, the only person they can look at They're not powerless. is that, wait, They're wait, not. they are not powerless yeah. directly in being the one to take the decisions as to what to be done about the insurgency. The only power they have is to pressure their leaders, which is what they are doing now. That's you not have true. converted okay. the language that's of true. pressure into, into lashing out. just lashing out. No. It is not lashing out. No. If, if this government had not been pressured by the people and the international community, we wouldn't even be having this gentlemanly. I, no, I agree. I agree. Okay, I'll, I'll still, I agree. I was still. I was still. That's fantastic. But I'll, let me tell you. I'm going to overrule. No, I'm going to overrule both of you. This is the point I, I want us to get. I want my callers to beyond uh, this to be part. I know. Good evening. Can you make it uh, quick, please? Good evening. Hello. Okay. okay so this is. Let me drop now, this line. Now very you keep saying. Nigerians don't prefer solution. Nigerians no. have asked for. Let me give you a few. We have one, over one. Let me give you. A, can I, I give you a solution? I want me to, 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 to come in on this. Okay. We've budget, budgeted one trillion, almost one trillion naira on security. But I was going to go to the solutions that we have contributed our commonwealth as a nation. Mm -hmm. We have entrusted this amount of money onto this government to help us solve that problem. We trust our president mm. and his cabinet. Mm. Do you know that sort of thing? We've done what we need to do. Do you know the people only have two choices? They can actually tr entrust their, their security, their commonwealth, everything, their vote, on, onto the person they have voted it onto. Mm. If they no longer have faith in that person, the only thing they can do is to recall that person or vote the person out. Exactly. So the solutions are pretty clear as regards the Nigerian people. Exactly. You know, so the solutions that you're now asking, yeah. are you asking us to sit down as a strategic committee of people 
in security mm -hmm. to then, disco to then dis discuss how we are going to solve this security problem. No, we as Nigerians are not, I'm regular not, Nigerians no, are not no, qualified no, for yeah, that. No, 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 no. We're not, I'm we're not saying not that. that. Yeah, what I'm saying. React to that before I bring no, it's very easy. What I'm saying is, why, why don't you, why don't you, I'm glad she added that point. Yeah. See, Nigerians have to stop sitting down and watching from a distance. Many Nigerians in diaspora feel powerless. They feel mm. that because they're not in Nigeria, they can't do anything about it. No, you can. Phone somebody. If you want Jonathan out, 2015 election is coming. You vote him out. Okay. And vote somebody else in. But don't do what some of us did. Mm. We just wanted the person that was sitting on the seat out okay. and wanted to replace him with anybody. Okay. Look and ask yourself, what would the other person have done? And then but in the meantime, uh, yeah. between now and then, what I would suggest we do is we feel like we can demonize the federal government mm. and we will make a good job of doing it. Okay. I don't see any problem with that because there are so many uh, reasons they've they given us to, to do that. They seem to be making a good job of it. No, 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 no. no that's what I'm saying. They've, they've given people, you know, people are taking advantage of the opportunities they've given them. But, they would but let, me you, you you let me say something to you. Let me say something to you. We have a common enemy okay. and that common enemy is Boko Haram. And Boko Haram's political agenda is the removal of Jonathan. Okay, before, before, Let's not before then, let me, let me take this call. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello? Okay, uh, if we still... Do we have you on the line? Now, Tonya, you made a point. People... Some, sometimes it's about the choice, isn't it? Like, government feel they are completely different from the people. People should not complain. People should provide a solution. People should give a solution. But when the president went campaigning around the country, the governors went campaigning around their state, they had a program. Did they? They, they gave a program. Is that, well, so why should we be... Was it the seven why, no, why should we... Why should we be providing them a solution to a job they've been elected. Okay. You, you run a company, right? Would you expect your subordinates to be... Look, I, I know too much about this. That's why you have to forgive me for wanting yeah. to interrupt you. Yeah. I did not support Jonathan in 2011. Yeah. When everybody came out and shouted Jonathan, Jonathan, I said no. And I came from, I'm from the Niger Delta. Yeah. And I said no. And the reasons I said no, I, 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 I listed them. Now. For the first time, Nigerians came out a mass mm. to vote. And many of them, including the ones complaining today, voted for him. Now, I can assure you that even if you had put Obama in this same Nigerian system that we have today, he would have fallen short. The system is bad. The system is corrupt. Yeah. It will not happen overnight. I have even said that 2015 is not change. 2015 is only preparation for change. I'm hoping that this will make many people angry enough to get involved in okay, politics. Okay, let, let, let me show that to Fumi. I agree with you. I actually yeah, agree with you. Yeah, about this. You know, I've been talking about this for yeah. a long time. And you see, my challenge is when you now start saying things like, oh, pointing fingers or demonizing, you're actually contradicting yourself then. Uh -uh. Because the system, I agree with you, the system is so broken. I said, that's why when I said, I said people must begin to hold accountable leadership at every level yeah. in their churches, even their husbands and wives at home. Everywhere. You know that's right, everywhere. everywhere. So it's a system that's too broken. Our systems, our processes, our infra infrastructure, everything is broken. We need to rebuild it. And I also agree with you that should be, we should be concerned about if we want to throw out a certain government, yeah. we should think of who is coming next. I but don't, we don't have, but we're not, but just, so uh, part of that process is indignation. Anger and yeah. protest. Okay, before I'm then, let me, get, let me get, let me get, let me get the Nigerians have been protesting before then, from day one. No, when me, Nigerians protest, we have been protesting. Okay, no. let me get the call line. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Yeah, good evening. What's your name and where are you calling from, please? Uh, my name is Abby. Okay. I'm calling from London. All right, quickly, Abby. Yes, please. I don't know what our president is doing for. Okay. And there was nothing being done, which is very, very upsetting. Because if, it, if one of their children is among these people, they will give the ransom to get the, the, their, their children out of this problem. Mm. But what is that? Because these people don't have anybody. Mm. They are powerless. It is very, very unfair. It was because the British government announced that uh, the Nigerian government did not invite them to come into our country to talk us that.
Thanks so much, and thanks for the prayer. And to, uh, seriously, you, you should agree with me on this, that if you don't find out the faults of where things are going wrong, you can't find a solution. We shouldn't just support for the sake of support. I mean, let, let, me, let, me, let me give you this scenario. The constitution of the country empowers only one man to control the Air Force, the Navy, the police, the SSS. And that man is the president and commander-in-chief of the country. How would you want a local government chairman to take over the job of the president? Well, listen, um, we can discuss the flaws in uh, the constitution all day. I mean, mm. we won't end. The problem I have, and you see, many people see me on the other side. They see me as a politician, or they see me. I've, I've done no business with, with, with the federal government. I've, done, I've conducted no transactions with them. They don't feed me. I'm here simply because I know I've, I've been there before. I've been frustrated. And I have now taken the bull by the horns to get involved mm -hmm. in politics. I have no business doing politics because I would rather be doing my business. But I've, unfortunately, politics is too important to be left to politicians. Nigerians can complain. They can point the fingers. She said he has done nothing for three weeks. She's probably right. I don't know what he has or has not done. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that we've done nothing for 30 years. 30 years we've done nothing. What so baffles, this goes beyond what baffles, Yes. What baffles me is that this is, only, this is all that has happened. I know that more things have happened. But what is baffling me is that this is all that has happened. As we speak, there is nothing that gives me confidence that will tell me that this cannot repeat itself. So what I'm saying is, can we please fix the system? And the way to fix the system is for some of us who are in diaspora or who believe that we, politics is too dirty for us to get involved, should go around for office. And take a responsibility. Because okay. when that happens, slowly we will now have more okay, accountability. Let, let, let me have Fumi's view on that. Fumi, yeah, because we can't all be in politics. Well, there's a point, though, that good people shy away from, from politics. Uh, because they know it won't work and they don't want to fool themselves. And these arguments, uh, unfortunately, me, I belong to a generation that has known nothing but protests and discord in the Nigerian public space. I had this argument in 1999, mm -hmm. when many people were, so, so you, you've, got to, you've got to go into government. And a lot of the people who are today in government, you were right in what you said earlier. So that solution you provide itself has been proven to not work yeah. because oh, a lot yeah. of the good people, let's us, a lot of the people, a lot of the people, a lot of the people who are in government today, actually this government has more than any government before it. People have track record of activism, of being genuinely concerned about Nigeria, who wanted to change Nigeria. You are right, something is wrong in this system. It's not by, okay, they come and go and they go into the system. No, you are right on one hand to call for many people to engage with the system, and mm. not only by becoming politicians. It's not just even in politics, it's a state in Nigeria's business yeah. um, economy. It's, 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 it's the same in the church. It's everywhere. Okay. It's the people who need to become more involved. I think actually it's the Nigerian people who need okay. to wait on every before, level. The risk, the risk we run is to say that we're not, we're not making any improvement. That's we are. True. I'm not saying that. We're making, we're making some improvement. And we're also getting worse. Nigeria, right. okay. Nigeria, is, Nigeria is the number one location for foreign direct investment. Okay, I agree. It is not let something me, you sniff at. Okay, let me bring... Uh, we're going to have an uh, uh, in-house uh, person, Ngozi, uh, la uh, your lady, Ngozi, to come and talk about what's going on on social media on this program. But first, we've got a caller on the line, if our caller is still there. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, good evening. Oh, oh good evening. Sorry about it, because my is Hello, good evening. Can you go ahead and make your contribution, please? OK, yeah. Uh, my name is Anthony. I'm calling from, uh, um, from Kent. OK. Go ahead, Anthony. Can you, Anthony? Can you can you reduce the volume of your TV set, please? Yeah, quickly, please. Okay, now. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. I mean, how many times are we going to say this person that mm. is in at the moment is not in, we should vote in another person, yeah. and this one is not in, we should vote in another I mean, we are tired. We should concentrate and, and, and actually see how far they've gone or what they're okay. doing. All right, all right, because we, we uh, thanks for your call, uh, for your call, um, um, Tony Prince Will. Before Ngozi comes in to tell us about what's going on on social media in this case, are you, are you satisfied with the reaction, the conduct of Nigerians, both online, offline, about this case? They took the initiative, they took it, actually took it away from government. No, I'm very uh, happy. Listen, um, it's easy to think that because I'm here and the position I'm taking, I'm not happy about it. I'm very happy about the yeah. protest. I'm very happy about the, 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 the voicing out. But I, I know something about the difference about being uh, uh, effective yeah. and, and just being present. And I know that what is needed mm. is to move us from protest to actual progress. Okay. And the problem is that we always protest and leave progress to the politicians. Mm. I don't think we should do that. What should happen at this point now is that you need to take it one step further because mm. it could happen to the, chil to the children of tomorrow. And I think if the children of tomorrow knew that we're in this position and we yeah. could have done something about it, I would expect them to be un unhappy with us that we didn't. Yeah. And that's the only difference. It's, I'm happy about the protest. I'm happy about the international attention. But I want us to slowly move away from the finger pointing at government yeah. to saying, OK, Boko Haram, you're the enemy here. And government, this is what we want okay, to for, happen. OK, for me, and, and we're still waiting on Ngozi to, because I'm really interested in what's going on on the social media. I can see quite a, lo a lot of activity. For me, what is the, this narrative, you know, uh, about saying Nigerians are not condemning uh, Boko Haram enough. That is not the what I see on social media. I don't understand that either. I, mean, I, do, I have not seen the average Nigerian who wants to em embrace Boko Haram. Nigerians are terrified and outraged at Boko Haram. Yeah. Average Nigerian would, get, would physically get behind their president if their president acted like a president. And I did not say protest is where it's at. I said yeah. protest is part of the process of of the pro, of, of the uh, the process of securing your democracy or whatever form of government you choose, there's protest on one hand, there's civil society, there's all sorts of things. You know, actually, the protest needs because now you say, oh, I don't mind the, the protest is nice. Actually, everybody supports the prote protest now because mm. it has become cool. Well, it has become I'm cool. For Publicly, media, there's. Uh, didn't, it didn't, 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 I'm not talking about you. Didn't mm. Doyin Okupe say that? He wishes he had worn a red t shirt yeah. onto an. Yeah. If he had known he was. If he had known. CNN. So it's now cool, okay? So that's not even the point. People, the protest was, usually, protest is a cry for help. When people protest, they actually, they are like children. They've got to the stage where they are crying mm. for help. People would not need to get to a point where they are crying for help if we don't have. And there, there's been several, several cases, there's been several things that we can take up with our government. And I know that it's, this government is just a is the next continuum of what okay. has started long time ago. So it's not. I'm not saying okay, they are the ones that started. Listen, we agree. That's not the point. Let me finish. That's so what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, do not demonize dissent. There's a tendency to Nobody demonize that. that, and do not. I'm not. And which, yeah, there's a tendency to do that. Yeah. And then when you say we should prefer solution, Nigerians have preferred yeah. their solution. They want to get behind the president, show leadership, and then if they want to either throw them out or keep them, that's their business. That come 2000. That's what democracy is for. If you don't want it to try, we shouldn't be afraid of changing leadership. Okay. We change it 50, 50 million times or, until we get to right. yeah, But getting, the system is what matters. I'm getting right well, about I'm, that. We have, perfect. That's what okay. we have. It seems to you, fix both, the you, you, you seem you both have a point of agreement. I, I, we're going to take a short uh, break and play you some some clips. And we're not going to take phone calls when we get back because I want Toye and Fumi or that to just show some light on this issue. So please stay tuned. That terror will not stop the world from moving, terror will not stop Africa from moving, terror will not stop Nigeria from moving. And let me use the opportunity to thank your home government, uh, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, President of the United States of America, the President of France, of course the President, the Premier of China. These are countries that are willing, have shown commitment that they will come and help to solve the unique problems we have the issue of terror, especially relating to this disappearance 
uh, of some young girls in a particular secondary school. I believe we'll be able to unravel it. I believe with the assistance and investment we are making now, we'll be able to bring terror to, a re to an end in Nigeria. And how do you, do you think you'll be able to bring the girls home? Yes, of course they will. Because, uh, we want to really know what happens in that secondary school that particular day. Up to this time, nobody has been able to give us a clear picture of what happened. And we'll be able with our satellite technology in Nigeria is still limited. These other powerful countries, their satellite technology is quite robust. So through their own system, we'll be able to know exactly what happened. And you mentioned that terrorism is the greatest issue facing it's, Nigeria. It's the greatest in terms of security. It's the greatest for now. On this channel, Sky182. Don't miss the debate by Nigerians and friends of Nigeria on issues surrounding Nigeria from around the world. My name is Kayo De Okundamisi. Buy your Nigerian merchandise. www.nigeria100.com. Contact us on plus four four o two o eight eight zero eight 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 zero zero. Hi, welcome to the countdown for 100 most influential personalities that are Nigerians because this is specifically for Nigeria. We welcome your nomination. Please feel free to send it to us, whoever it is, be it the private sector leader, it could be the Aliko Dangote, the Femi or Ted Dollars. Yes, of course, the Nigerians. It could be Godlock Jonathan. Of course, he's the president. Welcome back to Ben Television. It's been an interesting day today. We're talking about the girls in Nigeria and on social media a lot is happening talking about this issue so we got Ngozi Gale in the studio to just um, give us an idea of what's going on online and back home in Nigeria. Ngozi, uh, what's happening please? Hi, uh, thanks Karate. Yes, um, it's been a very engaging conversation according to uh, our tweets fans. They're saying that they're loving completely what um, is happening between Toya Prince Will and Fumi and uh, to, on today's show. So far, the conversation on Twitter has been um, agreement mostly with uh, Toya Prince Will and Fumi that they're both making complete and accurate sense. Um, one of the things that's been going on, as a matter of fact, is about the protest. Uh, loads of people have been saying that Nigerians are normally used to saying things like um, it doesn't matter, go back to our normal everyday lives. But currently, everybody's now agreeing that protest is the way to go. And they've also agreed a lot with Fumi saying that without um, social media and the impact that this hashtag of Bring Back Our Girls has had, uh, Nigerian and Nigerian government would not have been able to do anything as much as they've done so far. So um, a lot more has been going on. You know, uh, certainly some people are saying that you should agree and accept that your man has failed. Some people are saying that they don't think that Nigerians are the ones who should be doing something to provide a solution to um, the problems that's happening so far, that it should be the man who was elected, which is the president. So all in all, it seems like the criticism still lies with the president and the government as a whole for not doing anything in particular to help, according to people. And also, the protest is going to happen tomorrow at the Nigerian embassy is also tweeting like crazy. So if you want to get involved, have to hashtag uh, bring back our girls and follow my handle, girl and girls, or Kaya Days at Ogundamisi. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, I'll pass it back to Kaya Day. I'll see you next week. Bye bye for now. Yeah, thanks Ngozi for that. And um, that's the conversation is still going on online. We encourage Nigerians in London. We are more than 1.5 million in the UK. We need to bring people out tomorrow, Friday, uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. right in front of Nigerian embassy. If it rains, snow, or even if the if the girls come down flying, 
we need to stand for those girls. We need to take time off work. We just need to let the world know that London, which has the highest number of concentration of Nigerians in Europe, can speak loudly for our girls who are missing and also show support for the president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces has been raised by Tony Prince that Look, Mr. President, we acknowledge the fact that you are a bit confused as to what to do. We are here to give you some ideas. So, Tony, uh, before we go back to Tony, I just want to take the last, the very, very last call line on this show before you are accused of, of being anti-democrat. So, good evening. If we have the caller on the line, we would... Um, we want you to please tune down the volume of your TV set because it causes serious interruption to, to our live uh, broadcast. So, go ahead. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Yeah, my name is Benjus. All right, go ahead. Make your contribution, please, quickly. Yes, I, I, I went to a place. It's good to that people around the leader are talking. You see, by the picture podcast. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks for your call. We, we really appreciate, and that, that's going to be our last caller for today. And uh, this question is to Tony quickly. I've seen Shekau display different kinds of armored cars. I'm not talking about armored personnel carriers. I'm talking about tanks that can bomb places. Different kinds. I've seen a Russian made. I've seen a Czech made. I've seen a US made in three different videos. And even an anti-terrorist website confirmed that. These guys have strong armories, and we've got borders. What is wrong with our security apparatus, you know, in the country? What, is, what, what do you think will be the thoughts of, of, of the president? You know, look, I, I look at government, especially in this kind of scenario, like a uh, football goalkeeper. You know, when a goal is scored, uh, everybody will blame him. You, don't, you forget the saves. We don't know. We've seen the negative. Mm. But for all we know, there may be, have been some positive foiled attempts. That those APC carriers could be they could be in Libya. No, they are not APC carriers. They are armored tanks. Yes, armored personnel carriers. No, APC. no, they are not armored personnel. Okay, carriers. armored they are tanks. tanks. They are, they are armored they tanks. Could be, they are tanks that can that can. What blow I want up to understand, what I want to understand, is yeah. that they could be They could be in Mali, taking those pictures. They could be in Libya. Seriously? Taking those pictures, of course. No. And they, they can post them on YouTube from anywhere in the world. For all we know, the man that is making that statement is not in Nigeria. All I'm saying is, let us not assume. Tony, Tony, I, I, I have to. See, I have to, uh, let's not assume. I have to, no, I have to interrupt you here because. Let's not assume. No, I want to The point I'm trying to make is that yeah. we don't know their location. But what we must understand is Nigerians are not foolish people. Yeah. Just as we have very smart Nigerians, mm. there are one or two of them in government. Okay. I suspect there are one or two of them in security agencies. They will get to the bottom of it. Okay, now, we, because will. we're going to round up some. For me, is this not. I am getting a sense of self-denial in government when we say Boko Haram invaded barracks and we just claim it's probably in Mali and Togo, and I'm not referring to Tony here. I've had this repeated by Doyo Okukwe and the likes that those things taking place are not in Nigeria. Let me tell you a little story. During Occupy Nigeria, I was on the streets um, filming as well as protesting. And I, when I talk with passion and pain, I don't talk for us. And you know what I mean. Yeah. The average middle-class Nigerian or upper-class Nigerian, given half a trouble, will leave that country. I'm talking for those who don't have a choice. A lot of those people, I remember them saying to me that I, they did vote for President Jonathan. They, did. they trusted that the way he spoke meant that maybe he was closer to them, so he understood. So the point that I'm trying to make with this is that, that there's, they can sense the denial. There's denial coming from government about all of these issues. That's why people are afraid. The fact what that the APC picture could have been done in Mali. Fear. 
Okay. You know, why, why, oh. why this conspiracy theory? Why not accept okay. that we have that, the problem? I, I, I would have to... Why not accept because that we have because the problem? We, 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 we have to round up now, and we want to thank they Fumi, not want Fumi to and Toye. We're going to continue this conversation. You didn't ask about location. You asked about the kind of thing that they have that. I want to thank you both for coming on the program. Fumi, it's a pleasure. Thanks for coming in here, and we hope to have you again. Viewers, thanks for watching. It's been a very good night. But it's been a bad night for our country. We pray we find our girls. It's good been night. A bad few years and God country. bless Nigeria. A few decades. Only in terms of rescuing that? these girls that have disappeared from one of our secondary schools. Of course, the Premier of China has been with us since yesterday for a state visit. And the government of China have promised to assist us, and I believe that assistance will come almost immediately. The government of the United States of America, the United Kingdom, and France have also spoken with me and have expressed their commitment to help us resolve this Thursdays uh, crisis. On this channel, Sky 182. Don't miss the debate by Nigerians.